Chapter 16 Percy Lunch felt like a funeral party. Everybody ate. People talked in hushed tones. Nobody seemed particularly happy. The other campers kept glancing over at Percy like he was the corpse of honor. Raina made a brief speech wishing them luck. Octavian ripped open a beanie baby and pronounced grave omens and hard times ahead, but predicted the camp would be saved by an unexpected hero, whose initials would probably be Octavian. Then the other campers went off to their afternoon classes. Gladiator fighting, Latin lessons, paintball with ghosts, eagle training, and a dozen other activities that sounded better than a suicide quest. Percy followed Hazel and Frank to the barracks to pack. Percy didn't have much. He'd cleaned up his backpack from his trip south and kept most of his bargain mart supplies. He had a fresh pair of jeans and an extra purple shirt from the camp quartermaster, plus some nectar, ambrosia, snacks, and a little mortal money and camping supplies. At lunch, Raina had handed him a scroll of introduction from the Praetor in Camp Senate. Supposedly, any retired legionnaires that they met on their trip would help them if shown the letter. He also kept his leather necklace with the beads and the silver ring, and the probatio tablet, and of course he kept Riptide in his pocket. He folded the tattered orange shirt and left it on his bunk. I'll be back, he said. He felt pretty stupid talking to a t-shirt, but he was really thinking of Annabeth and his old life. I'm not leaving for good. But I have to help these guys. They took me in. They deserve to survive. The t-shirt didn't answer, thankfully. One of their roommates, Bobby, gave them a ride to the border of the valley on Hannibal the Elephant. From the hilltops, Percy could see everything below. The little tibber snaked across golden pastures where the unicorns were grazing. The temples and forums of New Rome gleamed in the sunlight. On the field of Mars, engineers were hard at work pulling down the remains of last night's fort and setting up barricades for a game of death ball. A normal day for Camp Jupiter, but on the northern horizon, storm clouds are gathering, shadows moved across the hills, and Percy imagined the face of Gaia getting closer and closer. Work with me for the future, Raina had said. I intend to save this camp. Looking down at the valley, Percy understood why she cared so much. Even though he was new to Camp Jupiter, he felt a fierce desire to protect this place, a safe haven where the demigods could build their lives. He wanted that to be part of his future. Maybe not the way Raina imagined, but if he could share this place with Annabeth? They got off the elephant. Bobby wished them a safe journey. Hannibal wrapped the three questers with his trunk. Then the elephant taxi service headed back into the valley. Percy sighed. He turned to Hazel and Frank and tried to think of something upbeat to say. A familiar voice said, IDs, please. The statue of Terminius appeared at the summit of the hill. The god's marble face frowned irritably. Well, come along. You again, Percy said. I thought you just guarded the city. Terminius huffed. Glad to see you too, Mr. Rule Flouter. Normally, yes, I guard the city. But for international departures, I like to provide extra security at the camp borders. You really should have allowed two hours before you planned your departure time, you know. But we'll have to make do. Now come over here so I can pat you down. But you don't have... Percy stopped himself. Um, sure. He stood next to the armless statue. Terminius conducted a rigorous mental pat-down. You seem to be clean, Terminius decided. Do you have anything to declare? Yes, Percy said. I declare this is stupid. Hmm. Probatio tablet Percy Jackson, fifth cohort, son of Neptune. Fine, go. Hazel Levesque, daughter of Pluto. Fine. Any foreign currency or, um, uh, precious metals to declare? No, she muttered. Are you sure? Terminius asked. Because last time... No. Well, isn't this a grumpy bunch? The god said. Quest travelers, always in a rush. Now let's see. Frank Zhang. Ah, Centurion? Well done, Frank. And the haircut is regulation perfect. I approve. Off you go, Centurion Zhang. Do you need any directions today? No, no, I guess not. Just down to the BART station, Termanius said it. Anyway, change trains at 12th Street in Oakland. You'll want Fruitvale Station. From there, you can walk or take the bus to La Media. You guys don't have a magical BART train or something? Percy said. Magic trains? Termanius scoffed. You'll be wanting your own security lane and pass to exchange to the executive lounge next. Travel safely and watch out for polyboats. 
They talk about scoffers. Puh! I wish I could throttle him with my bare hands. Wait, who? Percy said. Termedius made a straining expression, like he was flexing his non-existent biceps. Oh, well, just be careful of him. If you imagine he can smell the son of a Neptune a mile away. Out you go now. Good luck. An invisible force kicked them across the boundary. When Percy looked back, Terminius was gone. In fact, the entire valley was gone. The Berkeley Hill seemed to be free of the Roman camp.